Hello everybody, welcome to the video. Controversial Aspie here, both autistic and non-autistic, combined into one brain. Today we're going to be talking about double empathy. Is that a paradox? Who knows, you'll have to watch the video. And you will be able to watch it after this short commercial title break, which should be happening around about now. So, what is double empathy? Double empathy has been coined or termed by one of the researchers at Manchester. It's a two-way lack of empathy. In one sense, autistics find it hard to empathise with non-autistics. In the other sense, non-autistics find it hard to empathise with autistics. Which is a big, a big, big problem. And it's one of the problems what, that I've tried to been trying to decode with with my personal uh, logging of my experiences and writing and through my videos. I have a very unpopular opinion. I believe that the way that non-autistics socialize is more fruitful um, for well-being and happiness uh, than the, the regular autistic um, way of communicating which is very factual and logical and doesn't um, usually um, include a lot of a lot of emotional talking and about group dynamics and feelings which is um, a very big difference between the two so just to give you a little bit of background to why I'm like this I at school I was always a very very sociable kid I would always gravitate towards people who like to talk to me obviously that's you know that's what I do here yeah. great discovery there Tom but the people I liked were the people who were very emotional and liked to play, so it was typically non-autistic people that I used to gravitate around. My parents used to sort of facilitate me um, socialising with autistics, and it, it sort of went well, it, sort of was, it was sort of good, but I didn't enjoy it as much. I liked the, the very social environment that is, is shown a lot, a lot more in non-autistics, I believe. Moving on to my secondary school, or sort of coming up through primary school, I had a lot of friends who were female, and that has been a really big part of my life, which is, you know, learning how to communicate with, with girls, um, which I found to be the most enjoyable form of communication. I adopted a lot of the ways that they spoke, and hence my sort of feminine vibe, I guess. Um, <laughs> but what it did teach me was that my way of communicating, even though I, you know, when you're autistic, we have this sense of single-mindedness because we don't tend to think about outside of our box of logic. Um, this can be good for many instances. Sorry about that. So I was on a skateboard. Yes, he's got long hair. Yes, he's got a beanie on. <laughs> But this logic can be very, um, it can it can stop you from being open-minded. When I say open-minded, I'm not saying accept things, but when when you have such a logical backing and you feel um, like that's superior, um, you tend to block off a lot of what people are saying or dismiss it in your mind, even even if you are listening or try to show them that you are listening, and that's a very a very bad thing in 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 terms of in my life and I feel like it affects a lot of autistics as well. Now it's not all a simple bag of chocolates that you know what the chocolate is, it's always a mixed bag, it's always different for different people, but in this this video is, is, is I'm trying to get across um, the fact that it's better if I, if I talk about some people that I know. Uh, there is a lot, there's a sort of subcategories of autistics that i found. There's a lot of people who like myself, um, very readily want to socialise and emotionally connect with people. Uh, we tend to have a lot more like mental health issues and stuff. Um, it can be it can be on sort of a sliding scale, um, and and when when we come out from school, we can even become very jaded and and non sociable or not try to put in as much effort because you know we've been bullied or we've had some bad experiences and people haven't understood us because we're autistic and it's you know is is self-explanatory why and then you have a group of people who like myself 
very readily like the emotional connection that we get from talking to people so we, we learn about a lot about um, non-autistics uh, learn about how they speak how they interact how they in groups as well as singular people and how they express their thoughts and feelings in, in varying degrees of difference towards ourselves on the other side of the spectrum you have it's, no, it's another spectrum it's a spectrum within a spectrum um, on the other side of the spectrum you have the very confident people who don't tend to be very socially or emotionally uh, directed. Uh, these people tend to grow up um, being very, you know, they can they can stand for themselves, they can, you know, if someone's bullying them they'll punch them or, or humiliate them with their intelligence or something that is a little bit different to the other sort of subgroup that I've made up in my mind. Um, but these people can be very difficult to talk to very blunt, um, almost to the point where it's offensive. They'll, they'll very readily offend someone, despite no no benefit to doing that. Uh, just stating the fact, which is you know how if if you didn't sort of incorporate the social side, you, you know you realise like how you would think by you'd, you'd state the facts because they're more important. Um, despite if, if if you were trying to organise something, um, despite that you would tell that you would insult someone which may be less productive and less logical to do but because you've, you're so logical in, in your communication you would go with that sort of route of being completely blunt and offensive and um, without thinking about it and that, that's one of the, the issues because I I've got sort of got myself to a point where I, I understand autistics a lot more than the non autistics but I do understand non autistics a lot and I am sort of like a little bit of a like a hybrid. Um, I don't feel like there's a lot of people in the autistic community who bottle themselves off in groups and especially in forums and community pages on Facebook. This place is sort of a breeding ground for single-mindedness. Um, it, it, if you go into these groups and you talk about issues, you're not exposed to contrary opinions in, in a lot of cases. And even if you are, there is a very overwhelming majority of people who are very vindictive and, uh, you know, they, they, they complain about non-autistics a lot um, rather than trying to further everyone's knowledge about non-autistics in order to make life better. Uh, they focus on more of the negative side of it and, you know, oh, we're, we're not built for your society, which is true. But it's not their fault. They're not doing it on purpose. We are the minority and I think it's always good to bring your attention back to that because um, you wouldn't expect you know a very small group maybe like one or two percent of people with physical disabilities or something and you, you would have to change your whole society structure your whole buildings everything like that it does happen to some degree which is good I'm not saying it's bad um, but you wouldn't change the whole of everything and um, it would be more of an add-on thing um, after you finished the more important things that they cover most people which I think is a good way to structure society but a lot of people especially when those those tight communities see that as discrimination or you know not taken as seriously which is a, a very bad thing to do because if you box yourself into that group you'll find that it's very difficult to talk to people who aren't autistic which are the majority and if if you can't talk to them and, and convince them and you're more very volatile and offensive and single-minded um, then you won't be able to convince them and no change is going to happen from that you're just going to box they're just going to box everybody off into this this little knit community that although can be helpful for some people it, it after a while it, it breeds a very negative view of different groups which is a bad thing if you know anything about history <laughs> Talking about being sort of a little bit of a hybrid between the two, the two minds, I actually find it very difficult to talk to very single-minded and even, even if they are very logical, I find it very uncomfortable to talk to people who don't have that social understanding or don't incorporate emotions into a valid part of communication and a lot of the time this can, this can, this can happen. Um, I'll get initially annoyed and angry that they are, you know, being disrespectful or they're not 
thinking about it too much and they're more just fluently just spurting out facts and, and logic without thinking about the consequences and it can be really hard because I would initially get really annoyed and angry but I will also remind myself that I used to be very similar to that L less than probably less than them but especially as a kid as a teenager I was very much like that and it's it sort of makes me laugh and makes me a bit you know like ch chuckle a bit because you know there's I can't really get upset at them anymore, but uh, on the same the same side uh, they are they are being single-minded and they're not trying to think outside the box and think about how other people work and and um, compensate for that which is something that the autistic community wants non-autistics to do and it's it's a very sort of hot, very bad dynamic of people boxing themselves off and getting annoyed at certain groups and basically just ruining the possibilities for building bridges of understanding and, and building more walls of hatred which which happens a lot in the autistic community autistic community i keep saying it it's a nice little buzzword that i use a lot i don't know how else to put it so if you, if you have a way of putting that just, just tell me because it's getting a bit it's getting on my nerves <laughs> so if you're watching this and you find yourself sort of identifying with a certain group a good thing to remember is when you're trying to think of yourself objectively although logic is better usually logic takes in this account where a lot of our actions and our things that we do are very ego based um, I know it's used a lot in spirituality I'm not using it in that context but we tend to get a lot of our emotional validation and good feelings from making sure that our ego is high and you can see a lot in those those people who are very single-minded and don't really care about other people's emotions they like to beat people and show people that they are better than them so they can feel good rather than talking and emotionally connecting with people to feel good which is a very big difference and if you find if you just think for a second and just comprehend that maybe if, if you're more on that side of logic is key, logic is king, think about that a little bit and consider the reasons for the, the, the actions that you have and consider that, you know, maybe incorporating more of an emotional understanding into that would be more beneficial, which I think it is, definitely. So this has been a small little video on the double empathy rule paradox. I don't know, it's not a paradox, is it? It's not really a cyclical thing that you can't escape but it is a, a good thing to, to sort of understand when you're thinking of developing yourself as an autistic and also understanding autistics if you're not and you're watching this and um, it can be very good to understand the sort of mindset that certain autistic people can have and the reasons for their actions and um, if you know that a bit more you can be a bit more empathetic um, to them although if they're not very empathetic towards you Obviously, you have to set boundaries and you have to tell people when they're being rude and stuff, which I think is good. Um, it's good to tell people when they're being rude, you know, just because they have difficulty with social understanding and emotional understanding, it doesn't mean that you have to compensate for that. Um, just maybe don't react as much as you would do um, to a normal person. If you're coming at it from the, the autistic side, trying to understand yourself a bit more, um, I recommend just like going over this video a bit more and making notes on the things that I've said and trying to sort of relate some things towards yourself. It can be a very difficult thing to do, especially since autistics can, from from the, the inherent logic dynamic thing. thing. That, does, that sounds really intelligent, but it's not. I'm just mixing words a lot, <laughs> mixing buzzwords together. But if you get those together and you remember that, although it may make, make you feel bad to agree on some things that may be bad about yourself, is a very a good step um, especially if you make sure that you know that you're very ego based and you can tell from the, the, the traits and stuff that I've described um, for very logical based autistics. I hope this has been an interesting video for you. I have sort of had a realisation that I am sort of playing to the, the whole, not really, but I, I want to set aside my videos for something different. I have very 
very refined opinions on the nature of autistics in our society and the way that we react react and interact with people in general and I want to talk a bit more about that because it's not something that's seen readily on YouTube or in um, in many places to be honest and I think we need a bit more of that um, in order to make sure that our society grows in the way that um, benefits both non-autistics and autistics. Thank you very much for watching guys if you like the video give it a like if you dislike it don't dislike it, just, just click the like button anyway. <laughs> and if you have any comments about this, stick them down below. You can be as blunt as possible if you want, it won't, it won't shift me, I'm a, I'm a rock, I'm a stone. <laughs> or if you have any comments about it or your personal experiences, maybe you've done this, this list and stuff and tried to analyse the possible ways that you're being single minded, um, tell me about it, you know, if you put it down in the comments other people will look at it and they won't have the initial reaction of saying, yeah, screw you, like, autistics are king, logic is king, emotions don't mean anything, they don't benefit anyone. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, hope you guys are having a good day. It's nice and sunny out here in Manchester. Hoping to put a few more videos together. Getting a lot of work done. Very bored. But these videos are pulling me through. So, see you later, guys. Logic.